We move ahead to quarterfinal number four. And we will see a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu stylist once again. Fabio Jurgel taking on Jerry Bolander. Bolander out of Ken Shamrock's Lion's Den. Let's take a look at the tail of the tape. Jiu-Jitsu against submission fighting, which figures because he's from the Shamrock camp. Jurgel, five years older than Bolander, but don't let that age deceive you. Bolander is very crafty at this early age. In terms of weight, both guys 200 pounds. And once again, it's a international contest. Jurgel from Brazil, Bolander from Livermore, California. And here comes Jurgel. Proudly displaying the Brazilian flag. His managers, Sergio Montero and Tom Huggins. This guy, the reigning world heavyweight jiu-jitsu champion, but only his second pro fight. He had 132 amateur fights. Trained by Alberto Trovin, who was earlier tonight in an alternate bout. And by the way, Trovin was victorious, so that might be a signal of things to come. Now, Fabio is a classic Brazilian jiu-jitsu artist. He wants everything on the ground. He really isn't interested in throwing strikes unless it's an opportunity to open up a submission lock. He wants to bring it down there. He'll be very patient. I think this is going to be a great contrast again between two people, both very well educated in ground fighting. Jurgel talks about his strategy for his opening UFC contest. Good luck. Just doing the jiu-jitsu, the jiu-jitsu style, just looking the, to take the fight to the ground and go to submission. That's my way. There is a look at Jurgel, pro fighter with the Alliance Jiu-Jitsu School in Rio. He trained at the Gracie Academy. His style is comparable, he says, to hoist Gracie without a gi. And here comes Jerry Bolander. One and one in the UFC. Out of the Lions dead, managed by Bob Shamrock, trained by Ken and Frank Shamrock. He's now training full time. He was a welder at a factory for Apex Products, but then a friend showed him the UFC tapes. He went to Ken Shamrock's Lions dead. Two months later, he was in the UFC. Jerry Bolander is a submission fighter. He's a grappler. He likes to stand and, and fight on his feet at first, but he uses strong submissions to finish this fight. Well conditioned, he has limited bare knuckle experience. Jerry Bolander has got a share of confidence tonight. I feel more confident in the fact that I've already fought here. It's, um, it was a good experience fighting here and uh, I know what it feels like to lose now. I know what I don't want to feel again. So um, it, overall, it was a good experience. The experience of the Octagon, you do not realize how important it is. G-Man Rich Goins with the formal introduction of the competitors. Ladies and gentlemen, our fourth and final quarter final match of the evening. Please welcome the reigning world heavyweight jiu-jitsu champion with a second degree black belt in Brazilian jiu-jitsu. He's 26 years old, six foot and 200 pounds from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Please give a loud American welcome to Fabio Jorgel. Jorgel. And his opponent, a submission fighter with a professional record of four and one and a veteran of UFC eight with a record of one and one in the octagon. 21 years old, 5 foot 11, 200 pounds, fighting out of Livermore, California, and the Lions Den, Jerry Bolander. Bolander. Don't let those boyish looks deceive you. Bolander has been training hard. He's skilled. Jurgel, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Jeff, would you expect this to be a grapplers contest? I believe it will be a grapplers contest. Are you ready? It's going to be interesting to Are see if Let's Bolander has some good strikes. Fabio is capable of punching as well, but both these guys like submission. And they're going right to grappling. There's the clinch, a quick knee by Jurgel. 
Gets Bolander up against the fence. Bolander seems to like the counter roll. He likes to feel his opponents, energy coming into him, redirect it, and adjust to it. And Dragon, that was a role that you loved as a kickboxer. Right, I was a counter fighter. I always like my opponents to come at me. They continue to clinch against the fence. Back to the fence is Boland. You're wondering why you just don't wind up and throw a real hard punch to the head, and the reason is you'll break your hand. And that is why you don't see that. Those are small measured punches by Boland trying to hit areas. Those are proven to be the most effective in the UFC. Boland is hanging on to the fence to keep from going down to the ground. He does not want this Brazilian on top of him. Good job, good job. Oh, up against the octagon. Fabio trying to trip Bolander. Bolander hanging out of the fence to prevent it. Their legs interlock. Bolander using what we call a wizard to try to bring Fabio down, and he's done it. And Bolander now finds himself in the guard. And that's where Bolander wants to be. What about the legs? He's got right now. Fabio's in the guard. He's going to wrap the legs and try to push and shimmy Bolander's body. Bolander wants to create space so that he can try and strike from the mounted position. And it, look at Fabio, that's how crafty he is. He's very difficult. When you learn Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, the object when the man mounts you is to off-balance him so he can never set the punch. And you can see how well Fabio uses his legs, hooking on the inside of Bolander's thighs, that every time Bolander tries to raise his head, he tries to flipper those hips, or as he's doing now, push Bolander away so he's too far away to strike. Oh! He cannot kick when the opponent is down. He cannot use. That was a warning. That was a warning. That was a warning. That's going to cost him a fine. If he does it again, he's disqualified. That's one warning. McCarthy very carefully tells the judges. A right hand landed by Churchill. If you wear the feet, the and footwear, you must not kick when the opponent is down. Bolander is cut from that right hand. It's high on the forehead. It shouldn't be much of a problem. A knee that didn't really bother Churchill. With the bare knuckle, it doesn't take much to open up a cut on the face. The tissue is very soft there. So blood on the forehead of Bolander. Bolander landing to the midsection. Those last with you during the course of an evening. Right, they take a lot out of you stamina-wise. Particularly if they're hitting on the rib. Each time you breathe, you feel it. Long in the match of the night thus far. And look at Bolander. He's calm, he's composed, he's been in this position. Not here though. He has right. the he's got his yet. neck. He's got his neck, but he can't get the uh keep working, keep working. He's got a choke on there. Bolander had to spit out the mouth guard. He was sucking some air. Well now we'll see how Jurgel will go ahead and Try to finish off Bolander. Very competitive fight. Action slowing down a bit here. This is all a chess game now to position your body so you can go ahead and apply the finish. Fabio with that one punch was able to open up a cut on Bolander's head. And now Jurgel has Bolander up against the fence. But we haven't seen any punches, Dragon. Not really. They've been gra grappling too much to throw a good punch. Uh, the one shot, the right hand was uh, was the only punch. It was not powerful, but it did open up a cut. Watch for Giselle to do what we call passing the guard. In other words, see him try to pull his left leg out. He'll try to clear Bolander's legs and get to the side. You're right. He tried twice, Jeff. Couldn't do it. He's still doing it. His knee is out now. It's just a matter of whether he can slink his heel out of this. It's all a chess game. If you feel overconfident and relaxed, you can get flipped on the mat. Go high, go low. Bolander is on top. What a great move in the guard. And Bolander will create distance and strike. There is a headbutt. 
as soon as Fabio did that move, ball under freed himself. That was beautiful. He timed it. He felt he felt that Giselle would relax and go ahead and now try to apply submission, and he took advantage of that relaxation and reversed the Brazilian. Another headbutt. Now here's something they may not have in Brazil: chain link fence. Five ten in. 15 minute time limit in the quarterfinal. No OT in the quarter. Two guys very comfortable on the mat. This is one straight 15 minute period. There will be no overtime. If it ends at the end of that period, we go to the judges. And right now, this is too close to call. If anything, Bolander seems to maybe have the upper hand, but with the blood on the head, you might say Zerzel had the better striking. Then it comes down to aggressiveness, and I don't know how you determine that in this fight. Right now, it is Bolander on top of Zerzel, and referee John McCarthy telling them both to work. Look at how, look at how well Zerzel is just holding on to Bolander's elbow, preventing him from throwing that strike. To his credit, Bolander says, hey, you're going to hold my arms out with your arms. you got nothing blocking your head. I'm going to headbutt you. He's working. Jerry's definitely working. He's not wasting time in there. And he wants to stay here. He doesn't want to lose the mounted position. So you'll see him every now and then make sure that his base is strong and his balance is good before proceeding with the strikes. A couple of quick headbutts there by Bolander. Back-to-back -back butts. The nuances of grappling, submission fighting, Bolander, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, Jurgel. Bolander trying to land some punches to the midsection and then trying to go back upstairs. And the crowd beginning to chant for Bolander. This is a USA Brazil contest. Well, I'll tell you, Bolander is being aggressive, but Jurgel. With all that experience in this type of combat, being in the guard and such, presenting strikes, is doing a great job of defense. Right there. Give Bolander credit, but right now there's really no damage being done. It's just all work and effort by Bolander. And it's important to mention that Jurgel was unhappy with the time limit being so short. He's a guy who works his craft with more time. That was one of the things he was very upset about earlier today, Dragon. Right, they're halfway through this match already, and uh, Jojo wanted this to be longer. I mean, he likes to be uh, a patient fighter and wear his opponents out. That is the Gracie way as well. It is Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. They go until somebody wins, which means there is no time limit. They like to have the ability to work. They like the ability to fight and make people spend lots of energy in the mounted position trying to hit them. And when they come out later. Yeah. Exactly. Particularly when you start to get tired. I don't think we'll see Bolander do that in this fight. Jerry's, used, the 15 minutes Jerry's fight. using the chain link fence to try to get a choke on him. It's excellent to go ahead and create. It's anything you can do to gain an advantage. And if you can keep your opponent from sliding because he's bumped up against the fence, then you can use that to your advantage by just applying direct pressure to the throat in the form of a choke. It doesn't have to be a lock choke, just a pressure choke. So the fence, the ally of Bolander now, the nemesis of Churchill. And there you see Giselle almost able to go ahead and flip Bolander and reverse him. That's why the foot is hooked in between the legs of Bolander so that when he feels he's vulnerable, he'll go ahead and elevate Bolander's hips and try to toss him to the side. We call it an elevator. Anytime you can go ahead and move your opponent's hips up and to the side, it's an elevator. They're obviously having some effect because uh, Fabio is dropping that elbow down to cover up after he's taken a couple of them. There it goes again. But Bolander has been able to score to the body. I think he's been able to keep his balance by using this fence also. He's a very innovative fighter, Jerry. But I'm also impressed with the defensive ability of Churchill and the poise he showed. Absolutely. At this point in time, I'd have to give a, a point edge to Bolander. I would he's, have to agree with you. He's in the mounted position. He's continually staying aggressive. He's punching. He's not relaxing. You hear John McCarthy yelling, but Bolander isn't just sitting there waiting like we've seen Gracie against a bigger opponent to try to wear him down. 
You well, see him actively throwing punches. He's constantly trying to maneuver to get a good shot off, whether it's a headbutt, an arm, to the body, a fist to the body, a fist to the face. Headbutts by Ballander. Oh, there's the I have been waiting for someone to do that. A knee right to the coxswain, right to the tailbone. That's a technique he could be applying right now where there's no defense against it. And with your hands on the fence, he can't elevate you. Headbutt again, Bolander. We're now starting to see some pretty good strikes scored by the American. We're 10 minutes into this one. And pretty good power shown here by Bolander. Good strength for 200 pounds. And there's the left hand again to the midsection. Five minutes left. Many people feel, hey, this isn't fighting, but this is really the true sense of fighting. So many times, it's going to go to the ground. And here, you're seeing exactly what can happen when two people, both very experienced and skilled in this position, go at each other. You don't get big, looping, roundhouse punches hitting all the time. It's a game of creating oh, openings, get out, get out, angles, on, and, and, and strikes. And they're both doing a good job at what their discipline is calling for. The guard on bottom and anything you can do on top to go ahead and create that opening. But I have to give the fight to Bolander because he is doing the striking and the attacking and Fabio is doing the defending. That's he's right. doing a great job, but he's, he's not applying any damage right now to Bolander. None at all. Just stymieing his offense. 11-15 in. There is a 15-minute time limit with no overtime in this final quarter, final bout. And it has been the same pattern with Bolander working against Jurgel Bolander on top. The guard once again here being shown to be purely a defensive position. I mean, no disrespect by that comment. But it is an observation that you really don't have an offensive threat unless the top man gets off balance. The fence, Bolander able to grab it and keep from being elevated again by the Brazilian Giselle. Your comment is more meaningful with a 15-minute time limit. Oh, without a doubt. When you put the time limit on it now, Bolander has the opportunity to throw everything at him and just try to stay on top. So he can win on points that way. So Don the Dragon, Jurgel now has to make something happen, I would think. He's got to lose this match. We're over 12 minutes now. But I think that's why the Brazilians don't like the time limits, because they know they can defend themselves in this position, but they can't necessarily win the battle. Well, here Fabio finally has an opportunity. Let's see what Bolander will do. If I was Bolander, I'd just let him up. If I were Bolander, I'd just stay in the guard. I agree. He can slow right there, but here comes an opportunity. Fabio looking for a submission lock on an arm or a leg, but Bolander would have none of it. The only thing I think here that's going to get Fabio well, to his feet since minutes. he chose to stay on his back during that break is going to be John McCarthy, the referee, saying not enough action here in this guard position. And Bolander's crawling to the fence again. He wants to pin Fabio against the fence. Coming up on two minutes remaining in this bout. I'm impressed with Jerry's use of the fence. He uses it for balance. He uses it almost as an offensive tool. It's there. It is a tool. It's just a matter of whether you use it or not. There's another shot. shot. And it was to the tailbone again. Keep going, baby. You got him. If you catch Keep a man going. right there, you can make his bottom half go basically numb. You can cause it, it's almost like a burner in the shoulder where the, the joint will go numb. It won't be fun to sit tonight. Bolander again hammers to the body on, with the it. fist. Yeah, Fabio, let's go. Come on, Jerry. McCarthy employing Jurgel to work, to move. To their credit, they're both doing everything they can in this position. There is really not a lot of options. It's a matter of can you create the other man to make a mistake, force him into making a bad choice. And really, Jurgel is going to have to put it into desperation mode soon. We are nearly out of time. And this is one of the reasons that Jurgel did not want the short time limit. Didn't feel it was an a fair time limit for his style. Inside a minute to go. Same pattern. Ball lander on top. Jurgel on the bottom. This is a vulnerable go, position for Bolander. He wants to keep his hands near the fence. Jurgel is under both his arms. If he goes ahead and hooks the inside of his thighs with his feet, he can roll Bolander. So Bolander needs to keep, he's hanging out of the fence. I think he senses it. Now he's got one of his arms out. Now he's got a post. He's going to be able to balance to the one side. Great job by both these athletes in their disciplines. 20 seconds to go. 
And it doesn't look as though Tuchel will be able to make any type of move from this back position. Well, he's all right. He's totally, cool. totally confident. Just sit there and just wait it out. But he's, you can't win a fight laying on your back just trying to hold on to the man. Final seconds of the bout. It ends with Jurgel in the guard. And Bolander and Jurgel separated, and now it goes to the scorecard. And that was an exhausting 15 minutes. Bolander taking that huge breath as he heads back to his side. And I'll tell you, Jurgel doesn't even look windy. Uh, I think he I think right now he's contemplating he's internalizing what that experience was what he could have done and I think I saw in his face a lot of concern at, at, to the outcome I think he knows uh, after that performance that he could very well lose I think so too so it will come down to Curtis Shearer Steve Necklia and Ernest Hart Jr. the three judges who will simply hold up the name of the fighter that they feel has won. There is no split decision. Unofficially, I'd have to give it to Jerry. Oh, without a doubt. I don't think there's any question oh. that Judge Bolander Kutcher. should win this. I mean, there really could be a split decision, but there is no draw in this competition. Let's go up to the G-man, Rich Goins, who will lead us through. Ladies and gentlemen, we will go to a judge's decision. Our three judges at ringside. First of all, Judge Kurt Shearer, how do you score the match to Bolander? <laughs> Judge Steve Necklia, how do you score the match? Bolander. <laughs> and Judge Ernest Hart Jr., Bolander, the winner, Jerry Bolander. Unanimous decision goes to Jerry Bolander. He advances to the semifinals. No disagreement here. Oh, none at all. I mean, Bolander, once he got to the mounted position, was very active. Jurgel was once in the, the mounted position, and he wasn't able to do anything. And when he reversed him, got on top, stayed active the whole way, he won on all counts, grappling, striking, and aggressiveness.